Hola. Welcome to episode 44 of Word to Your Mama. The one year episode. That is correct. What is Word to Your Mama, you say? Well, the updated version of what Word to Your Mama is, is a podcast about the life of a Latinx mama and the lives of her amazing multi bleh, multicultural tribe. A celebration of shared experiences navigating this dynamic world. There will be special guests, mad laughs, and absolutely no BS. Nobby is our motto. Hosted by me, Ritzy P. In segments by the Supernatural Bear. He's only eight. He's going to be nine in in a month. Other than that, this podcast will be explicit. Please believe it. If you're listening for the first time or you're listening for the second, third, fourth, fifth time, 44th time, thank you so much for being here today. This episode is not going to be that long. It's just me for a little bit. And then it's the Supernatural Bear Corner, a special Supernatural Bear Corner, a special one year anniversary Supernatural Bear Corner. And that's it, kids. No big, no big shebang. But there are a couple of things to say. I recorded the first episode or the first episode officially dropped August 29th. It was a spur of the moment thing. It was just me. And it was because Chadwick Boseman had just passed and none of us had any idea that he had cancer. So it was a little bit devastating, right? Especially everything that he that he's done and what he represented and everything like that. And then it officially launched September 9th. With three episodes. It was uh, my hermanas in the Nabi Productions, uh, Lilian Rivera and Lady Emish, a.k.a. Elisa Garcia. And then also an episode for Eric Kohler, who's one of the nicest guys in the music industry. And then our very first relatives episode. That's the one that's me and my relative, Naisha. So those were the three blah, 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 like... That's what the research said. Drop it off. You know, when you start it off, when you launch it, do at least three or more episodes. And this is my first time at the Rodeo Kids. Had your herd show with the, your herd show fool. Shout out to them. Skit, Shane Jessup, Kano. Um, hashtag thanks, Skit. And then still currently going whenever we can do it. We got the nerd out with Lisa T.I. Jenkins. No, she's not black. She's white. But this is the first one by myself, right? So here we are. It's been a year and what a year it has been. It was something that I just wanted to do because the live music, live events shut down. And I didn't have the bandwidth to create any other way as I am a designer and an artist. So... I've had this idea for a long time and really it really started to be an idea of a a blog and a podcast maybe about homeschooling moms just because we've been homeschooling since he the supernatural bear was at a preschool and I was like I don't and I was doing research I don't see anyone I don't see that many blogs I don't see any podcasts that are sharing my experience um being Latina, Latinx, and homeschooling, and homeschooling for secular reasons, okie dokies. So that's what I thought this was going to be, and then it evolved into this. And with the help of my good friend Kim, it it was like she was like, oh, why don't you have, you know, open it up to you have amazing people, not just women, also men, and da-da-da-da, and they're not all just moms. And I was like, you're right, you're absolutely fucking right let's open this shit up and let let it be authentic and genuine and blah 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 blah. and here we are a year later um before we get into some of the questions and comments from the audience for this special episode i wanted to give a big shout out to maricel who has been a guest on the show but she also took the amazing photo of the supernatural bear and i on stage while Dilated was performing at the Shrine in Los Angeles. 
It's what we use for um, the website and the background. You probably couldn't tell what it was because I put I put a hue on it and, you know, um, it's kind of blurred out sometimes to put the logo on top. But that photo, I think, encompasses a lot of different things, you know, um, that's part of our life that makes our life unique. So shout out to Marisol. Appreciate it. She's an amazing photographer, but also she's an amazing entrepreneur, uh, the founder of Ladies of Sound, and also the head boss, Biatch, of the Beat Junkies Institute of Sound. Also, shout out to our crazy, super talented nephew, Nico Beats. He's the one to produce that amazing intro that you guys hear every episode um outro as well and I hopefully hope to have him on here as a guest because he's you know a young whippersnapper making moves of his own and not having to deal with being known as oh that's babu son not at all it's like everybody knows that's Nico Beats he's dope as fuck he does what he does uh he's also uh, extraordinary producer, of course, as you know, and he is the owner of Oasis Music Library and Oasis Recording Studios. Please believe it. Also, what we'll have in the show notes is please check him out. Uh, the work that he's done with Huey Briss. I'll have a link to their latest Grace Park Legend, the documentary version of that video. Please check it out. It is amazing. Let's get into the questions and comments for the audience for this special one-year anniversary. Let's start off with Jerome Liu, who is an artist and storyteller who has also been a guest on the podcast. Please listen to his episode. He asks, how does it feel to have one year down and counting? Uh, it feels like just yesterday, but it also feels like a lifetime ago, if that makes sense. Because this started in September of 2020. You have to remember, it's like, the height of the pandemic going into the fall, going into winter, and also a couple of months before the election and all the stuff leading up to that. It was crazy. So, yeah, it just it's it's gone by so fast. But then when I think about being in the midst, in the middle of that time, it seems like, whoa, that seems so far, so long ago. Uh Ugh, just remember the anxiety waking up every day. You guys remember. You guys remember? I remember. Okay, let's go to the next one. Um, what's the one thing that surprised you? This is from Rebecca Cervantes, health and equity advocate. She's also been on the show. So uh, a lot of things have surprised me about doing this, having this podcast and sharing it with everybody. Um I think I was surprised with myself and also surprised with the response to episodes, certain episodes. If you remember, if you remember, episode 20, Ritzy P, The Past and Mental Health. I'm really surprised that I had the titties, the titties to press publish on that solo episode. I had just literally, like literally minutes before got out of my therapy session via Zoom and I was dealing with some deep stuff. It's been a tough year for many things, but on the personal level, I didn't divulge that much on the episode and I'm on the other side of it, but it's still something I'm processing and stuff, but let me just give you a little, a little mouche bouche of it that, you know, we'll see if I talk about it and in what capacity I'll talk about it. But the gist is that uh, I was in contact with my biological father who I've never met. And I found out that I had seven other siblings, <laughs> younger siblings. Yeah. And um, that my biological father is the youngest of 12. And um, so many other things. I mean, it was it was a it was a mind fuck. And 
as I mentioned in the episode, I was, you know, I had graduated to going once a once a month to see my would see my therapist, talk to my therapist. And then during that time, for you know, from that time on to like maybe June, July, oh no, no. Weekly. <laughs> Weekly. And it was surprising that I pressed publish because it was such a raw moment. And I was like, I don't know how people are going to receive this. I don't know if this is, I don't know what's going to happen. And I got some real amazing feedback from people, whether it was online or they texted me directly or they DM me and it meant a lot. Um, One of the, I didn't know what's, you know, when you do something, you're just in it and you're just like, I don't know what's happening until after you kind of black out. And then, so that's what kind of happened during that episode. And then when I had to edit it, I was listening. I have to listen to every episode and edit it. And then, you know, I take little quotes and I make a graphic and I post them. And so I had to do that for myself. And so two that I pulled out, one was I'm good, but only because I've been going to therapy with the shit that just went down. I would be a mess. Imagine if I hadn't done the work to lead up to here. I have the tools and I'm in the right mindset where it's still going to fuck me up, right? But it's not going to take me out. And I was like, yes. When I heard it myself, I was like, for sure, for fucking sure. That's when I was like, okay, I'm so happy that I did go to therapy way before that I did go to therapy a couple years ago. And that I was in therapy at the time that the, you know, that the shit went down. Uh, I was real, real happy with that. And then another one is pain is pain and trauma is trauma. And if you don't fucking deal with it, it will deal with you and manifest in ways that you might not even fucking know. And it's the truth, folks. It's the truth. It was messing with me. I didn't even know it. I thought it was cool. I thought it was cool. Never thought of him that many times before, you know, and I was just like, oh, single mom. I'm cool. Didn't have a father. I'm cool. I'm with an amazing person that's respectful and supportive and loving. I'm cool. But I wasn't. (laughs) I wasn't. It was crazy. So, yeah. So that and then also surprising is that when it was my birthday I did another episode it was episode 30 born day and I don't like attention on myself and you're like why do you have a podcast then because I have people that I have on here just guests fools like that's why I have this on I like having the combos I love sharing these stories and da, da, da. but when it comes to solo episodes like full-blown solo episodes you know as a child of immigrants we're taught not to stand out at least in my experience, especially being like a couple of ep- ex- episodes, a couple of exits away from the border, it's like, don't cause a scene. As women of color, it's like, you're taught, be quiet, shut up, take it. Don't bring too much attention to yourself. So I struggle, you know, I, I know I'm dope. And, but to put that attention and I don't know, it's something also that I've discussed in therapy. But for my born day, because it was on a Monday this year, I did a special episode where I kind of just tell a little bit my background, my story. And it was because it was the second year of being in pandemic. And I was like, you know what? I deserve this shit. We all deserve this shit. We need to acknowledge. I never make a fuss about my birthday. I never post shit about it. So that people can remember. If they remember, they remember. If they if if Facebook tells you, Facebook tells you. You know what I'm saying? You reach out, you put me a thing, whatever, whatever, whatever. Also, side note, my Facebook account got hacked. Ritzy Perry went go on. So that's what happened to me there. Um yeah. So those are there's a bunch of surprising things, but I think those are a couple of main things that surprised me that I did it and that I had the titties to press that button, that publish button for it to be out in the world. Let's go to the next one. What's been your favorite thing about doing the podcast? Um, Also from Rebecca, I say doing it in general. It's a grip of work, but the convos that I have 
with the people that I consider familia or and or folks that I respect and admire and want to find out more about them, get to know them better and really interested and intrigued by their life and their their multiple journeys to get to this point when we have the combos. That's my favorite thing. I love sharing it. I love getting that like I said before, the feedback that people can take little nuggets, good or bad, and I feel like it's giving a platform to diverse voices and that we are just kind of organically via the convos talking about issues that are not really talked about in our communities, especially at this age bracket. We're talking mental health. We're talking regular health in general, eating right, uh, changing your health by the way you eat and the mentality and and understanding that we didn't have access to that information, to the education, uh, to get to, to, to be in a certain place. You know, we're, I think a lot of us, especially being immigrants, being children of immigrants, we're just trying to fucking survive out there. Do you know what I mean? Like, we don't have time for people, no one in our family knew cared mental health none of that shit um eating right i mean do we have access all the time to quality foods a lot of food deserts out there in our community uh, by design so yeah and the mental health i think has been very important the fact that i was feeling okay and open enough to share that the fact that there's been many guests that have we touched upon it lightly or in depth and I think that's crazy important. So, yeah. And then one of the questions we put out there to folks is like, what, what was our favorite episode or certain things like that? And Ivan Gallardo, Arts and Culture Management, who was also a guest early on, I think it came out last year. She said that her um, favorite episode so far was Ceci Bastida. Please go check that out. Ceci Bastida, she also has a track out with an amazing Palestinian artist slash rapper. Check that episode out. Okay, so I think that's going to wrap it up. I don't want to be here too long because I think the the meat of this, the, the center is going to be the Supernatural Bear Corner because I do a little interview with him, my little man's. Remember, kids, he's only eight. I know he sounds grown, but he is, he's not. He's grown in some ways, and he still might have to, we have to remind ourselves, he's only eight, dude. Like, I know he says <laughs> crazy big words, um, and he, his, his, his cognitive leaps that he has are crazy. And also, he's tall as fuck. He's still only eight. But we get into it. Uh, I believe early on I had asked him some of the questions that uh, that I asked a lot of our guests. And But it's interesting to see what his answers are this time. But he also answers the questions that I just answered above from our peeps. So let's get into uh, the Supernatural Bear Corner. Staying competitive in these dynamic times means having the right technology at work for your small or medium-sized business. Whether your goal is to grow, downsize, or modernize, Panoply BPO provides the right combination of tools, support, and affordability necessary to make it a reality. Visit panoplybpo.com. That's P-A-N-O-P-L-Y B-P-O dot com to schedule your no obligation consultation today. Mention WTYM and get your 13th month of service for free. PanoplyBPO.com. There is a better way. And now introducing the Supernatural Bear Corner. Supernatural Bear. Hello, everyone. It is SMB16 here. And today, for a one year anniversary special episode, um, Ritzy P slash my mom is going to interview me. 
questions. I am completely in the dark about these questions. So yeah, let's do some questions. Yeah. Okay, let's start with um, a question from your uncle now now, uh, Jerome Liu. He wants to know, how does it feel to have one year down and counting? Um, well, Uncle Now Now, it feels good. Like, honestly, um, it, it feels really good. I, I love it. I feel like a part of something for a change. And, you know, it, it, it feels good. It feels good. Come so far. Then some that very first episode. Okay. Okay, the next question is, What's one thing that surprised you? And this is from your tia Rebecca, who is on a previous episode of Word to Your Mama. Mm-hmm. Advertisement there, I like it. Um, so you don't remember the question? Sorry, I forgot the question. Pay attention to the questions. What is something that has surprised you? Oh, something that surprised me. Ah, sure. Um, something that surprised me in words your mama's um, you know, uh, the fact that I, you know, not just that I get my little corner, but um, you know, a lot of my people, a lot of well, my friends, my friends and stuff, um, their parents let them listen to my parts of the podcast, and I'm 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 just surprised how well words your mama's been doing and. I hope it will continue to do well in the future. Okay. Next question, also from your dear Rebecca. What's been your favorite thing about doing the podcast? Favorite thing about doing the podcast is, um, you know, I get to express myself, you know, hang out. I get to have some quality time with my mom. No. And, you know, I have a lot of fun when we record. There are a couple of bloopers and everything. It's you know, it's really fun. It's like being on the set of the film, except you really don't need to do anything. All you have to really do is talk, and I do hand gestures and stuff. Yeah. Okay, the last two questions from, from the audience are, if you could see any artist or group from now or the past perform, who would it be? That's from your Papa Bear. Ooh, my Papa Bears. <laughs> um, I think... That if there was a single artist or a group, I think um, that I would probably want to see. I'm not. I'm really not sure. But if I had to say, I would say dilated people. They do some really good quality music, and don't tell me how I know them. That's gonna be in a future episode. But um. You know, I, I, I've I actually seen dilated peoples before, and I really hope in the future to see them again, be on stage. Do you remember seeing them? Uh, yeah, kind of. I was crying. <laughs> I was crying and weeping because I, I didn't want that relative to be, you know, to sh- I don't want to share that relative with the world, even though he's been doing that before I was born. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next question. After Bumblebee, which Transformer character deserves the next solo movie? Ooh, I love this one. Finally, a Transformers question for a change. If you are a Transformers fan, just, you know, hit me up, hit me up. I need to know my peeps. But after Bumblebee mo- after the Bumblebee movie, which character do you think deserves to get a solo movie? Um, I would like to know a lot about a character, um, Nemesis Prime. Um, it would be pretty straightforward, but I would still love to see how he interacts with the world and how he interacts with, um, Unicron and, you know, the other Terracons. And, um, I, I really hope to have like a kind of darker kind of, you know, movie, solo movie, but that could feature a couple of Autobots and Decepticons and stuff. And then another bot that I think would deserve a great chance it would be um ironhide um not the ironhide from the bayverse no i'm talking about g1 ironhide from for all those you know 1984 fans from the g1 including me um so i think it would be really cool if 
those two had their own solo movies. That would be really cool. And, um, you know, I would pay millions for it. <laughs> that question was also from Papa Bear. So now let's get into the not-so-rapid-fire questions, the a.k.a. slow-as-heck questions. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Three words to describe yourself. Three words to describe myself. Um, I would probably say reckless. Um, I guess action. <laughs> that that even a word? <laughs> um, I get. Uh, then I guess it would be reckless. Um, kind and um another one that I would be would probably be creative i do a lot of creativity and um hopefully in a couple months you'll know what i mean what do you mean by reckless reckless i mean i like to follow my own rules i I don't do you (laughs) (laughs) no i don't but you know sometimes in your mind (laughs) yeah in my mind in my mind also a lot of my characters that i play i like to play reckless characters uh, um, okay. a lot of my characters are very reckless. Um, they are. My voice sounds, you know, like, oh, yeah, ha, <laughs> ha, like, you know, something like that along those lines. Um, and I kind of am in real life. A little bit more tame, but, you know, still similar. Okay. What's the best piece of advice you've received? Be myself. That's Definitely. Right. Be right. myself. Don't be someone else. I was very nervous on the first shooting day. Um, well, not, not shooting day, recording day for Tier Mama when I did my first SMB corner all the way back in like September. Yeah. Like September or August of 2020. I was really nervous, but, you know, I just knew I had to be myself. And here we are now. I'm being myself. And I have no problem with it. Mm-hmm. And this should prepare me for when I'm like voice acting, acting, stuff like that. Okay. The next one is what song do you listen to to hype you up, to get hyped? Oh, uh, <laughs> this might be a weird one, but I would either listen to Eye of the Tiger mm-hmm. from, um, you know, Rocky. Um, that's a classic montage. I do some push ups, some pull ups. I. <laughs> I like to get ready for the day. And um, another one that I listen to is, you know, uh, gas, gas, gas. Uh, <laughs> not that type of gas. You know, um, that song. Gas, gas, gas. I'm going to step on the gas tonight and fly. That one. Um, I like to listen to that one a lot. Like, I mean, the car gas, not. Who who sings that one? Uh, Manuel, I think. Okay, we'll look it up. Yeah, he's a really good i love that song and finally what will be your legacy um legacy what do you mean by legacy what say if you were to pass away tomorrow or as you would like to say oof <laughs> what would you leave behind well if i oofed um I think my legacy, if I oofed, would probably be um, par- partial voice actor and, you know, just being an, trying to be an overall good person, trying to do the best you can to, you know, be himself and, you know, express to the world. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's all we want for you to, that's all I ever wanted was for you to grow up and be a, a kind person. And you are a kind person. Oh, Mara. <laughs> That's why I call her on the normal basis. <laughs> okay. Wraps it up for the yep. for the year. Okay. Uh thank you so much for all the support, all you guys and um those people who have been on the show. Thank you for being on the show. I've had a lot of fun. Um I don't mean to do any names or anything, but one of my most favorite ones is Spinorita. That was re- that was a really fun episode. And, um, well, I mean, my part, uh, I don't listen to my mom's parts. Explicit! Yeah, I was gonna say, he doesn't listen to them because they're explicit. I listen to, I listen to my parts, though. You um, like it because you, you sang her name? Yeah. 
And then also Mona Lisa. You did oh, yeah. a, but I mean, Mona that was Lisa. a real song. Yeah. Can I get a day to write it? And if you're busy. I wanted my dick on Saturday. Hey, 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 hey. Round up the posse foods coming around the way. Okay, uh, yeah, that wraps it up. <laughs> and I, I would like, to, before I go, I would like to thank my friends and family for supporting me. Be yourselves, everyone. That's the moral of the episode. Be yourselves! Thank you. Should be do Yeah. There you have it, folks. Episode 44 of Words Your Mama, the one year anniversary episode. Supernatural Bear, my little man, I love him so. Yeah, we have to remember, remind ourselves that he's eight because he uses words just in everyday conversations, such as alliteration, viscosity, <laughs> like for reals. So that was nice and special. And we shared a special moment. I love when he says my name like that. Also, I just want to say thank you so much for the support. This started just as an outlet for me to do something creative, different and new and to provide a platform for my amazing dope ass tribe. I did little to no promos. Nothing. It was just like, you know, the regs, socials. I did that. But I didn't have the bandwidth because of, as you heard, kind of some of the things that I was dealing with. I was trying to take care of myself mentally. But now I'm in another space and we have a media kit page that has a media kit, a multi-page media kit that breaks down the show. And because I was dealing with my stuff and waited a while close to the year mark to get all the information and data and think about it hard. And I mean, the media kit went through so many revisions and from help from some amazing peeps, my amazing tribe of writers and business owners and social media gurus and stuff like that, that it was a month's time and I was able to revise what the little elevator pitch of soup of um, word to your mama was and that has helped so anyways it's out there I'm doing a real push I've been booking guest spots on podcasts possible articles and stuff and I'm reaching out to different media outlets and trying to collab and stuff so if you guys think of anything for this for us or if you want to work together check out the media kit page you know, it's a, there's a baton at the top of the website. Check it out. And I also want to take the time to thank every single person, every single guest that has been on the show since we started. Without you, this would be nothing. I would not have learned as much as I have. Our listeners wouldn't have learned as much as they have. And next week, we have a special relatives episode where Naisha and I, my relative, and I, we go through and we kind of talk about our favorite moments and what we learned about doing this and stuff like that. And she doesn't know it. And I don't think she really listens to the other episodes. But there might be a surprise. Might be a surprise. We'll see. You have to tune in to see. So that will be next week. And then the week after that is a special episode that is only happening because the supernatural bear requested it has been had requested it since jump and has reminded us ever since and that is to have his papa bear have his own special episode and we're trying to figure out how we maneuver and navigate that i'll be probably posting to see if anyone has any questions but that shall be interesting because you know we're partners and we don't talk like that. He's like, what are we going to talk about? I was like, I don't know. I got to figure it out. It's different when you're that close, I guess. I don't know. Anyways, thank you so much to everyone that's been a guest. Thank you to everyone, everyone that has contributed, spread the word, has told their folks, has told their peeps. I want to thank you so much. 
And, you know, we're going to give it a go. We're going to give it a go on this promo tip and see what happens. And then if, you know, if it doesn't work out, we'll, we'll call it. We'll just call it. But in the meantime, in between time, we'll keep it moving. Again, muchísimas gracias to another year. And as always, we reap. Word to Your Mama is owned and produced by Ritz P. The intro is produced by Nico Beats. If you want to get a hold of us and see other things, all there is to know, go to wordtoyourmama.com. And as always, Word to Your Mama is brought to you by RitzyPeriwinkle.com and PanoplyBPO.com.